What up, y'all? I hope you're doing well. We're here for our weekend oracle and tarot message. Uh, the weekend message is usually reflective of a, a cul the culmination of all the lessons that we've been working with during the week thus far. So um, pulling from the Radiant Sun Oracle, we've got Mars in Libra, which is choice. We actually had this last week, again, with the balance of the, you know, pain and beauty of life with the thorns and the blossom of the rose, the beauty of the rose um, weighed against the thorns. I literally have a thorn in my flesh right now. <laughs> which was metaphorical um i uh, like sustained this during like uh, me meeting with this guy who was like trying to diagnose like some of these maintenance issues in my house which is so funny and it was like finally i felt seen and the universe thought it would be really funny to like give me a thorn in my flesh so they could see the universe is literally being like yes this has been a thorn in your flesh and i'm like now i literally have a thorn in my thumb thanks but hilarious so yes Balancing the, the pain and the beauty of life. The legs here are like locked in this board. So it's like almost symbolizing like difficulty moving forward or feeling stuck or like, you know, blocked or locked in place. And then here is justice weighing out the karma with who, I, you know, sometimes I feel like this is like the fates here. And I feel like the three fates have been like hovering around us and something has been crowning us and potential has been crowning us. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven hearts. It's like seven is always associated with like divine divinity, divine completion, the seven, you know, core aspects of the Godhead um, being, uh, being uh, portrayed. So this card, um, Mars in Libra, there's like an issue that maybe needs to be confronted and, it, and it's going to take deliberating the wisest choice to move forward. And you kind of feel like stuck between a rock and a hard place. So it's important to be diplomatic um, because underneath it i'm just gonna start t talking about these cards like and then i'll pull them up as we go it's kind of different than usual but underneath it um is the knight of swords reversed the knight of swords reversed is like this energy of a message that's not well received and so this could be you know you maybe in an institution or within a group or for like example like i have found these um this my air conditioning that has been producing too much moisture, you guys know about it if you've been here. It's been a thing for like a couple of years. Somebody came over who was just like a fresh set of eyes and found like several compounding issues that have been adding to this whole thing. And so there are parts of this complicated hairball that I am not qualified to do. But there are parts that I feel like I could probably avoid like a spike in rent or a war with this maintenance guy if I just get under the house and like do it myself. Like this guy came over and told me what would bring it to spec and what would help out a lot down there. So he fixed what he could. Okay, so even though like they're not gonna wanna hear this, maybe I can present it in as diplomatic way, a way as I can. Like if you've been in an, in, in, in an issue where you've become frustrated in an environment because you're the one who sees maybe inefficiencies or you're the one who's trying to shift and do this like reformation or, or shift the go team goal or vision or whatever and people just like aren't willing to do the work and they don't see it, they're not as passionate about it as you are. They're just like not gonna wanna like, it's just gonna like, ruffle their feathers or they're going to get triggered. They're just not going to, they just want to want to be combative. So it's important that you choose wisely. You choose what hill you're going to die on. And then you choose something that's going to feel like a sacrifice. Like, oh, I shouldn't have to do this or this isn't fair or whatever. But it could be something like the, just the pound of flesh that the demon needs in the moment to get you over the hump and extend an olive branch. And that could actually end up playing out to in your favor in the end because it could save you some money. It can save a lot of emotional back and forth. It can just bring more unity to the situation. If you come at this with a sense of sharing, like, okay, let's just work together to find a solution to this challenge rather than 
like if you were just telling someone a problem and you know being taking the lead and taking action but being too bossy or delivering the news and maybe like a factual way but just that like you're gonna need diplomacy intact essentially so something needs to be communicated there are good ideas um, there's innovation here maybe and you know perhaps you are saving someone else's investment by speaking up who knows what the situation is but there's something here that's requiring us to maybe go out of our comfort zone a little bit to try to diplomatically relay a message that's probably not going to be something exciting for everyone to have and it's important about how you approach this because in a spiritual way this might have issues to do with codependency and kind of practicing stronger boundaries and overcoming enmeshment and not like prioritizing everyone else's needs or like worried about the implications on everyone else at the expense of something that's going to be a costly mistake in the long run. There's something here where, okay, so we have the Saturn in uh, Pisces, which is the lost card here in the Radiant Sun Oracle paired with the hanged man. The hanged man has had a moment to hang out, right? Maybe you've been robbed of a lot of your time and your freedom and your energy. And so like this has kind of sucked you of your life force, right? But in the meantime, you're the one that's gotten the, the best perspective and the best 360 view of the whole situation, right? So you have the higher perspective here. You know what needs to be done. You know how to move forward. And so you're ready for the, you know, it's, it's always like there's more going on behind the scenes than meets the eye with the hanged man, right? So yes, there's a pause in activity. But now it's like the consciousness has shifted and it's a higher consciousness and a higher awareness and you can move forward. Well, this higher awareness is of the tendency to try to protect others at the expense of your own self and that leads to even more damage. It's like getting over enmeshment and feeling like you're emotionally responsible for everyone else. Because in this situation, I have a reluctance to pass this information along to my um, to my property manager, even though he's kind of reached out to me about it and wanted me to like relay it to him and detail what's going on. But I'm like, okay, well, what if I tell them this? And they're like, ask the maintenance dude, like, why didn't you take care of these things for the last couple of years when they were issues? Like, why did you just let this become an issue? Because it could damage a whole house. Like, that's a lot. It's a big, you know, piece of um, ownership to let dilapidate, right? So there could be implications. So I don't, you know, necessarily want to get anybody in trouble, but I also don't want these people to lose their investment, right? So I'm going to read in the book, the lost card, the highlight key notes that we should take away from the lost card. Um, it's so funny. Usually these are so metaphysical, but this time, like this, this week's message felt a lot more literal in a way. Um, okay. So loss below a raven pecks at the, okay. <clears throat> Below, a raven pecks at the last scrap of flesh from a bony skull. Saturn is traditionally the planet that can signify loss. Above is a grand house and grounds. Couples stroll in a carefree manner in evening light. So this is uh, potential for self-discipline and responsibility is invested in helping other people with problems. The sensitivity of people with this planet combination, uh, planet sign combination, uh, to others' needs, they make they can make it difficult for them not to become involved in helping people in some way. Okay, so their sensitivity is like they're overly sensitive to everyone else's needs, and then they end up overly prioritizing, doing everyone else's bidding, and then they're probably neglecting themselves. So in some regard here, it's like there's there's going to have to be a balance between choosing the thing that you are going to take on for yourself in the situation, but then setting the boundary so that you're not overly taking on what's not yours to carry. And that could be the lesson that we're learning in this scenario, this little um, like physical material world 
circumstances that are playing out. It's like the scene work is playing out so that you can ultimately learn to like not be so involved with other people's needs and other people's well-being that you're neglecting your own and you're propping up other people's um, negligence or their lack of care or awareness, right? It's like let them let live and let live, right? And so you know, don't over prioritize others to the degree of codependency and um, self neglect and self abandonment. Uh, okay, so the uh, Saturn Pisceans have a strong insight into the motivations of those around them, but should be careful that they don't lose their own identity when faced with other people's demands. Excessive imagination and sympathy can create problems that don't really exist as other people's sadness sorrows and losses become their own. So again, becoming emotionally enmeshed with someone to the degree that you, their suffering becomes your own and you're taking on all of the heaviness of their plight and you are carrying around a bunch of guilt that doesn't even belong to you and feeling bad and then like getting involved in things that you don't need to be involved in. It's like, don't take on this cross, put it down. It's not yours to carry. So um, let's see, uh, often Saturn Pisceans feel the desire to, or need to work in seclusion or retreat from the world in some way. It may be that they will be attracted to the study of the deeper processes in the unconscious mind and in such interests as psychology. But watch that an excessive tendency to compulsive inward looking does not become over, uh, obsessional. Saturn Pisceans are better looking outward um, towards others than looking within. So it's like easy for them to diagnose other people, but they avoid looking at their own issues. Again, always helping others and knowing how to heal others and knowing what others need to do for their own pro progress, but not necessarily for their own. Um, let's see, could it be that the inquirer is really worrying about someone else's loss and not their own? So yeah, you're like over, maybe overly prioritizing the worry of someone else's loss above your own. Um, a feeling of loss, situations involving um, hospitals or health clinics, work in the field of complementary therapies, counseling, others developing interests in the occult. <laughs> That's what we're doing now. Okay, so... Moving forward, escape. This card has a very similar uh, continuation of that theme of putting someone else's interests and needs above your own. The uh, Mars in Pisces card, there's like this need here to want to get away or um, get, get beyond the situation, but it's like you're being held back in it because you're over prioritizing um, someone else. And so there's the Knight of Cups here, which is like, I feel like when within the context of this, like pairing with this card, it's almost like someone else, someone has explained, or you have been told things that sound good, like, you know, sung a good song, but it's like, this guy's like, oh yeah, like, like, Someone who says, talks a good game, but they're just trying to like bypass the situation or cut corners and get around things, right? People maybe have been like, oh yeah, it sounded like everybody was on task. Everybody seemed like they were doing their work, but they weren't. They were just like, they just knew, you know, how to phone it in, right? That kind of energy. Um, or maybe, you know, someone who is just like kind of giving you a flight of fancy, fantasy or run around um, in escapism. Well, there's also this energy here of someone helping you get out of the situation that can rescue you from, like, maybe there's a helper that has, like, um, like the key to, like, solve a situation. For instance, the person who came over sent by my sister today to give me a diagnosis on all the issues that were creating my um, poor air quality in my house, right? He rode into the rescue, gave me a sense of hope and renewal of spirit, and maybe didn't solve all the problems, but gave me a lot of direction um, uh, and like went through the work to try to come in galloping in and like sweep me off my feet essentially with like helping me with this home issue which is very opposite from this energy, which is the Knight of Swords upside down, like running away from responsibility. You know, do you guys see kind of these energies and how they might apply to your situation or a predicament that you might find yourself in? It's like 
this new energy is coming in that can be very helpful, but there might also be a paralleling energy that like is the opposite, which is trying to divert your attention and get away with like cutting corners. Let's just put it that way. Taking the easy way out, um, trying to, you know, um, do something the, the easy way with no like skin in the game, say. And then detachment is here with the nine of swords. And I think what this is just encouraging us to do is like, whatever this issue is, it's just like, it's been keeping us up at night. Like, oh my God, like, what am I going to do about this? We've been losing sleep. We've been losing time. We've been losing energy. There's been so much anxiety and so much just like building emotion around these issues that it's like the only way to get out of this quagmire is just to emotionally detach and be completely stoic and emotionally sober and present your plan of action or strategy as like factual and not emotional. Back to the real world um, example, the guy who came over to diagnose the problems going on, I he had like a lot of stuff to tell me. And I was like, gosh, I don't even know where to begin or how to write this down. I was like, you know what? Why don't we just take a video of you taking me on a tour of the issues and you can point them out on video and you can explain them in your own words. And, and it'll just be the facts. I won't have any of my frustration or, you know, any of that built in. There's not going to be any baggage. It's just going to be like, it's just the facts, ma'am, right? So that's what we did. So it's like detach yourself from the emotional implications and the, like all of the things that you're worried about will result in this catastrophizing of the situation and just emotionally detach and follow the guidance that you're being given just one step at a time to get yourself moving forward out of this stuck feeling or this to, to, to change your situation. And I do feel like there, there's going to be an immediate improvement. Um, there's going to be an immediate shift in the vibrational surroundings of your current circumstances, especially with the combination of the hanged man and the, um, the Knight of Cups card. I just feel like that's really positive energies coming into the situation. Um, your feelings are going to change. And so if you've been like in a situation, like a household irritation, that's just been driving you insane, like, and you've been in emotional distress because of just like mounting adult horrors, <laughs> like be, be of good heart, like be of good cheer. You might find the help that you need to alleviate these issues, to just start knocking them out. And then you'll start feeling a lot better. And that'll take care of a lot of like, oh, when you're just like your nerves are in knots and it's just like this like uh, surface level, like irritations and to, like a little, it's like wa water torture, just like one little drop of insanity at a time. And you're just like, oh, it just takes you, just, just rips you, rips you in half. <sighs> uh, go forward and prosper. Shabbat shalom. Ciao.